fudge. Oh, yes, they did. What? My camera doesn't know. Get down here, you. Where are you going? It's my camera. It's filming the ceiling. Your camera's fine. Mine yeah. was just f- f- filming the ceiling. Oh, okay. Good uh, film. Not... <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. It's my magnum opus, my masterpiece. Speaking of movies, Tommy. Yes? I've seen a movie this week. Which one? Um, Not one you've told me to watch, sadly. I didn't okay. have that much time in my hands. No, that's fine. But what have you watched? Um, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Ah, you've watched it. Can I tell you something? I actually preferred the one that you haven't seen yet. Wow. Wow. What is it you didn't like just, about this one? It's not that I didn't like it. I just thought there's a little bit more of a crossover to the previous film. I was expecting to see a little few Shrek elements in there. They were there. But I was expecting to see a few more. The Goldlocks and the Free Bears were my favourite characters. I liked it that they were just like a crime family. I love their um, accents. Yeah, yeah, they're all Cockneys, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really, I really like that. Um, but actually, that yeah, there was a whole uh, that that's a whole different review for a whole yeah, different yeah. day, which well, we'll probably get into. An- a- Animal August, we'll get there. Is it um, Animal August? I don't think it is. It is. Yep. No, it, it is. Yep. It is. <laughs> but for I now, it was animated. But that's April. No, 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 no. What's no, going no. on with me right now? But for now, Jolly July continues. It does continue. It doesn't just continue, Tommy. It concludes. Oh, oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. This is the last one. It is the last one. Bring so, it on, Tommy. Do tell. Do tell. So, oh, I didn't even know we were on air. Did you not? I didn't even know we were on air already. You snuck that one up on me, good and proper, Dan. Um. Well, oh, hello, everybody. I thought you knew. Hello, YouTube. That's how I normally start, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's usually YouTube. how we start. You can, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hello YouTube. You, you just think I went polite on, on you all of a sudden. Did that not strike you at all? Well, I thought that, but also <laughs> the fact that we we usually greet the people that are watching before we get into it. We do. Shall we start <laughs> that again? Yes, yeah. Let's start, let's start that again. Let's start that again. Marker. And go. Hey, good reference. <laughs> yeah. Hello YouTube. Welcome aboard. Hello. I'm Dan. That's Tommy. You know that by now. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. We appreciate that. Welcome to Jolly July, the Jolly final July. the final film of the month. You know we're concluding now. We are concluding. Maybe that... we should start doing prep talks before yes. this. Yeah. That is awesome. Tommy, what have you got? So I've gone for a comedy this time around, Dan. I've gone for a, 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 it's more of a cult film, really, but it's it happens to be a film that me a and cult you, film. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not many people really know about it. Not many people have seen it. But the people that have, me and you included, think it's a good. One. Oh, we're the cult. We are the cult. We're the cult, right? This film is Kevin and Perry Go Large from, <laughs> the, from yes. the year two thousand. It's a great. It's just a fun comedy, dude. And uh, yeah, let's get into this. Uh, so, cinematic adaptions of British comedy characters rarely work, as exampled by cinematic blunders like Mrs. Brown's Boys the movie, the oh, Harry right. the Harry Hill movie, <laughs> and the biggest curse upon humanity, Keith Lemon the film. Oh, like these are awful films. They're awful films. But this film falls into the rare category I like to call. Films based off of British comedy characters that turned out quite all right, uh, alongside Bean, the ultimate disaster movie, which I love. You've seen that, right? I've seen that. Mr. Bean, the movie, Bean. when he goes to America and ruins the painting. Yep. Really good film. And the first in between his film as well. I think that works very well. Yep. Um, I didn't to... quite enjoy that, to be honest. No, the first one. The second one is the one that's rubbish, I think. Okay. But, but the first film actually uh, sticks the landing. Um, it's almost like you need to... <laughs> yeah, I realise this. With Mr. Bean, the in-betweeners, and Kevin and Perry, it's almost like you need to take them out of the UK in their film for it to properly work. Because <laughs> that's... Like those three films take the main characters and put them in foreign countries, and that's why maybe that's why they work so well. I don't know, uh, but either way they do. Um, I've been watching this British comedy gem since I was five years old. Whilst a lot of the crude jokes went over my head, I can safely say the laughs only furthered upon rewatches as I got older. And I'm sure it's the same for you as well, Dan. I will just say um, they've just referenced Bean. On the yeah, trailer. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the same writer, 
or producer, I think. Nice. Uh, but that, yeah, that's that's a great connection. What is key to this film working is Harry Enfield and Kathy Burke more than anything, as their portrayals of Kevin and Perry are timeless classic characters. Me and my whole family adore this comedy purely for those two characters that are both funny for entirely different reasons. Uh, Kevin is the cliche teenager who berates his parents every chance he gets and deems himself smarter than he really is. Whilst Perry is the polite but dim best friend who would follow Kevin off of a cliff, but his politeness is what brings a lot of his laughs. Hard to think this is a grown man and a grown woman playing teenage boys, but it just kind of works for the absurdity this film brings, don't you think? Yeah, I didn't... I found that out quite recently, actually. Yeah, yeah, they were like 40 years old and were playing like, you know, teenage boys. It's, it's, it's hilarious. Also, I've got a shout out to Reese Iffens as superstar DJ Eyeball Paul. He brings just as many laughs as the title of two with his Liam Gallagher attitude and his constant use of the word twat, which I think is just hilarious. The Like the bit where he's pouring vodka into his eye because apparently like, you know, it gets into your bloodstream quicker. Yes. And then afterwards, me and producer man Steve laugh about this. All the time when he when he when he pours it in and then he goes, oh, twat! You know, yeah, he, and he just said, and it, that that's that's all we needed. Brilliant. I watched this on uh, BBC Three once before it yeah. disappeared and came back on air. They cut that bit. Of course they did. Of course they did. Of course they did. BBC ruins everything. Um, <laughs> it's a different video for a different day. That. Yes, that is. Uh, Enfield did something very smart with the soundtrack for the film too as he realised uh, since the film is set in Ibiza it made total sense to go hardcore on the level of trance music that features in it. Isla and Follow Me are my favourite tracks from the film but the soundtrack really is a love letter for trance music fans out there. Scratch that, the whole film is a love letter to trance music. But don't forget that a trance song came out of this and made it onto a now compilation album. I don't know if you know this. I think I do, All I yeah. want to do is do it was released as a chart single in the UK. Yeah, yeah, it was. And uh, all the more, all the better for it, really, because, again, another banger. Um, Huge tune. So, a, a banger about banging. Anyway, um, so... <laughs> to, so you had to go there. Had to go there, man. Oh, no. So, to close, Kevin and Perry Go Large is a raunchy comedy where the subtle humour hits you harder than than the more obvious ones to a degree. It's the subtle stuff that's funny t- in yeah. this to me. Uh, the soundtrack slaps, and the film is considered a cult classic to many, including me and my family. A British comedy oh, yeah. sketched, a British comedy sketch up from TV to film and done right. Yes. So on that note, Dan, I'm giving Kevin and Perry Go Large a three and a half out of five. Nice. You know, I was on the fence of three and a half and four, but I'm actually going with four. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. But- I think it's a movie that deserves it. But I think to a degree, like as I'm sure you're aware with me when it comes to reviewing comedies, I tend to review them on how much they make me laugh. Yeah. And three and a half isn't a bad score for that. You know, it's I not mean, a bad score Kevin for and that. Perry is not the funniest film in the world. There are funnier films out yeah. there. Um but it th- It's a classic. It, it's just it's it's it makes you proud to be British. That's all I can say about yeah. it. It's just a British sketch done well. British comedy t- done right is the finest yeah yeah it puts any other country to sleep when it comes to comedy yeah if british comedy's well, done it used well to. yeah well yeah i mean these days you know good <laughs> not luck. these days no nah, yeah but it used to kevin and perry go large is in that era where it used 100 percent. yeah and what a way to see out the month dan absolutely so animal or i'm loving the sound of this yeah 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 i mean uh it, it, it'll be very interesting you know to Talk about films where animals are the... Uh, the and, and this could be animated and live action. Um, or both. Or and both. that is why I want you to stay here. Right. Not no. moving. No, no, no. I want you to stay here. What's the next line, Tommy? I've, yes. I fell into that one. You fell into but that we're one. saving it for when I review it. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. You fell into another one when you got to the studios today. Oh, yeah. Quite literally, you to be fair. Yeah, yeah. If I'd have actually left the window open, you'd have fallen. For Let's give the YouTube some context. Uh, Tommy arrived here at the studios. I was outside pretending that we got locked out. I was going to say that we're going to climb through the window. Uh, Tommy was all about ready, but I think my face just gave it away. And, uh, and the yeah. fact that you pointed up to say a window was open and that window was not open. Yes. I should have planned that a bit better. I never see your jokes coming down. Yeah, I'm gonna try. You hide that. them too well. I'm gonna try that again in a few months' time. Well, yeah, we'll I'm gonna see. do it on a really snowy, blustery, cold day, <laughs> so that you don't know. Good luck with that. That I'm joking. <laughs> anyway, you do that. I will smash you over the head with this. Where'd you get that thing from? Don't know. It was here. What even is that? Don't know. It's like a keyboard. Back of a keyboard. Is it a key? Yeah, it's back of the keyboard. 
God, join us next week the for back I- of a keyboard. Join us next week for random IT knowledge with Tom and Dan. I didn't know anything come off. <laughs> it's, it's just laying there, dude. Fair enough. Anyway, <laughs> we're in a room full of junk. This. You can like, comment, and subscribe if you love Tommy's reviews and want to maybe challenge some of Tommy's views. It's, he's not right about everything, you know. Should he have been a little bit nicer with Kevin and Perry Go Large? Should he be allowed to do half stars? Should he be allowed on YouTube? That's all for you to decide. And you can do so in the comments. You like, comment, subscribe. And uh, you can click the notification bell as well. You know, if you've got nothing else to do with your life, you want to know when we're on so you can watch us live every time. You can do that too. And of course, if light reading is your way of working in the world and you wish to send several tweets about the sentence your comfort zone is your comfort zone because it's your comfort zone, then you can follow Tommy on... Larkins95 on Letterboxd. Do you know and, who I am? You, and you can follow Dan on Daniel Moore Radio. No! Dan Moore Radio. Yay! I can't remember if you shortened it or not. That's the thing. I remembered it last week. I had to shorten my name in order to use the word radio, otherwise, it was just Daniel Moore Rad. Right. Well, you need to up your game on that app and start Rad. doing more. Rad sounds cool now that I say it. You need to do more. But I didn't want people thinking I did work with radiators. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Have a great rest of your week. We will be back next week. First of... Well, is, it will be the 1st of be August. The first yeah, of August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be yeah. the 1st of August. I'm not looking forward to the beginning of August, as you know. But once of we course. get through that... Once we get through the whole of next week, I'll be ha- happy as Larry. Exactly. I've never even met Larry, but I'll be as happy as he is. And we'll start talking about animal-based films. You know, films, oh, yes. films where either animated or live action, uh, the animals are the protagonists or main feature of the story. So that'll be fun. Let's uh, let's see what next month brings down. There are some films I'm hoping I'm, I'm bringing up uh, or hoping that come up. We'll just have to see. Anyway, you take care. Take we care, everybody. Catch you on the other side. Have a good week. <laughs>